illustrations by Pete. Hello everybody. A short time ago, a viewer commented on another video of mine and said, you know, sometimes the way my mind works, everything needs to be in order. And uh, I'm paraphrasing, of course. I, I can relate to this because in my mind, things need to be in order. It took me a very long time to be able to just sit down with a pen and paper and draw something or some watercolor and paint something. What used to happen to me is I used to have to have a picture in front of me and I understand the struggle and it was very hard for me to do anything abstract at that time. Now, it seems kind of strange because when you do something abstract, it's just that, it's abstract. And yet, sometimes it's difficult to do. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways just to get started doodling. It's a, just a couple of different techniques and strokes that you can use to go ahead and start doing this if you do have trouble. Now, one of the first things that I learned was from my grandmother and she showed me, uh, this is a long time ago, but I, I never really forgot this. And she said, use simple shapes. And just using simple shapes, She showed me how to draw a dog. So here's another way to use simple shapes. And this time we're going to use watercolor. I've seen people do this a lot. Um, there's a couple of people on YouTube who do this, but you know, just something like that, or maybe, uh, well, you can almost use a very similar shape here. And then just put a little point at the end of it like this. Okay, while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to show you something very simple. Random lines, and they kind of wrap around each other. So you can start doing this and just play around with it until you get something that you like. But let's say I just put a little line, and I'm going to put another line here. I'm going to do another one here. Maybe I'll put another one here and I'll change direction. And then I'm going to do another line. You can just keep doing that. Fill up a whole page just like that. Okay, another kind of stroke you can use is what I call a radiation stroke. It's like something's radiating out. So you'd have a little thing here and then you draw another line around that another line around that we're going to draw a little variation in it and then in here we're going to draw little shapes that are inside this shape do another shape another surrounding line another one you can go off into another direction now Fill up a whole page just doing that. Hash marks are fun as well. So a hash mark or a hatch mark, they call it hatching or cross hatching. I call it hashing and hashtagging and that's fine. So these are hash marks and you can just make them in any pattern you want. And then all sorts of things. If you've tried to fill up a whole page just doing this, you'll have all these forms that pop up and every once in a while you can just draw a little solid line that you're working off of and then everything off of that it'll just work off of that when you start the next shape might be down here And you can fill up a whole page like that and develop little shapes. Okay, these are dry now. So when you use watercolor, you can do a little thing like this. Make yourself a leaf. 
you can get real creative with it and make it a tree like that have a little branch that comes off do something like that and I see a lot of people do that you can make a little bird here and just play around with it make some shapes draw some little things like this no problem okay here's one of my favorites I like to draw these weird jagged or sharp shapes like this might draw another shape like this and one of the fun things about this is because it's an actual shape you can do one of two things you can either paint over a background and do this and color these in black or you can do enough of them and then paint everything around it black and so the only thing you see are the shapes on the page and that's pretty cool another type of shape is what I call a furniture shape or a furniture pattern and that's you ever see old furniture and they have these weird little you know they have these weird little patterns all around them now some people would call this something else I don't really think it is that thing uh, some people you can use this if you're uh, painting mandala or something like that but it doesn't have to be you can just do any kind of you can do this in the middle of something and then you might put little just little details in you might color this whole thing in black give it some depth don't underestimate black space anytime you're you want to do something a little bit different and give it some contrast it really brings some attention to what you're doing okay another thing that you'll see me do in almost every uh, abstract drawing that I do is stippling. Now stippling um, I like to do these weird kind of weird shaped orbs they're never perfect or at least most of the time they're not perfectly circular and they usually are on the side of something else there'll be something else around it and then I'll put that in there and then I go ahead and put a lot of what the stippling is just dotting really you just put these dots around and you just try and figure okay to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional you put a lot more towards one side and then just separate it separate a little bit more make it a little bit more sparse as you get closer to the edge it just adds a little bit of form to it now also with hash marks you can draw shapes and then just add some texture to it with hash marks and now it looks like maybe this part is uh, flat on top and it kind of curves down around the side kind of like a rock or something like that uh, I usually do this on a curve so I see a curve and that's where I start the line you don't have to you can start it anywhere you can start it over here and make your own shape with it it'll add something to it now if you want you can also draw some attention to it by putting cross hatching in or hashtag marks and it just gives it a little bit more of a shadow okay another thing you can do is try and think of something um, maybe in nature like fungus or leaves or wood I'm gonna show you a couple of those pictures now on the screen and you'll see that there's there's so much there's interesting texture there there's so much that you can do with these textures and okay now what you can do with that is anything you want if you see a rock 
right? You're just looking at a rock. That's a weird looking rock. But let's just pretend it's a rock. And then you just start to add a little bit of texture. Maybe uh, wherever there's any kind of shadow, just add that in. And you can do that. You can fill a whole page with shapes like that. You can also do something like this. And, you know, when you want to draw something and you picture a light source and you shade one side of it, well, just do it with hash marks up the side. And then if you want to accentuate other parts, you can really see where that shadow is coming from. But if you fill a page like this, it could be interesting. Okay, on this page, I did some of what I'm talking about. So here's a mushroom, and I added some of that texture like you would see on a mushroom. Underneath, there's a little bit more complex, like you'd see on a mushroom. And then I started adding these weird tendrils that attached it to this, whatever this is here. So one thing that you can use to attach shapes, if you have a shape over here, you have another shape, Matter of fact, I'll do it right here. So if you wanted to continue this and come up around here, like that, then you can start to go in here and develop smaller lines that just kind of, they're random. They kind of connect into whatever you're doing. You fill up a whole page just doing that. There's so many different things you can do. I understand this is difficult. I understand that sometimes you don't know where to start. But if you take any of these things and just start somewhere, just start filling up a page with something here and see if it helps. Another thing I like to do a lot is to add eyes. Just anywhere you'll be going along drawing and all of a sudden you want to put an eye. Put an eye somewhere, anywhere in your drawing. Doesn't have to be there. That happened to be the best spot at the time. But you can do anywhere. You can uh, just add an eye somewhere. Doesn't even have to be a part of anything else that you're doing. And it draws attention. People your mind will try and recognize something in something that's abstract and it will be pulled to something that it can recognize like an eye. Another thing you can do is go with mechanical structures. So let's say you just start drawing very squarish shapes. like that and the way you can change things up once you draw, draw a couple like that start doing them more vertically add some things like this you can start adding some areas of interest so I might darken this spot in here and then change something so once you get something going like this you might start to add some other shapes in here that make this area more interesting than the other shapes around it. It'll just create some areas of interest. You can start to add things hanging off of things. In a lot of the things I do, you'll see things like this. Just things hanging off of things. They don't really mean anything. They're not there for any reason other than to fill up this space and make it a little bit more interesting. You can color in shapes makes it look a little bit more interesting. Again, with the more contrast you have, the better things will look. So if you have a little area where, and I fought against this for a while. I didn't do the, a lot of this because I like to put a lot more thought and detail into what I was doing. But the more I blocked out color and shapes, the more interesting it actually was to me because it created more contrast. Same thing when you use color. I just blocked out sections of color. So I really hope this helps your creativity. I hope it helps you 
start to do a little bit more abstract things. It's one of the greatest, if you can learn to do this and do it well and enjoy yourself, that is the most important thing is you're getting something out of it. Enjoy yourself when you do something like this and it will definitely boost your creativity and you will have so much fun doing it. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of some of the things I've done. Okay, so I, I, I drew this machine and I did it after doing something else on the other page, but um, this was the first part of it, and I just drew a just is just a mass of nonsense in here. And I drew there's a couple faces, there's like a weird I don't know vulture turtle I don't know what that is. There's a little fish right there. There's another little bird head or something like that. There's another some kind of weird sea creature. There's a there's a bug that kind of comes down this way um, there's a, a face right here there's a lot of just weird stuff in here and then I said well this would be kind of funny if it was really being produced by a machine which is exactly what I did I had it being produced by a machine and here's where all the nonsense is added and here's where all the color is added and it pushes out that stuff okay here's something <laughs> so I, I started drawing a little city up here and then I decided to put it on its own little thing here and I don't know if it's a planet or if it's a ship I think it's a ship I think it's more of a spaceship than anything else and the city just kind of wraps around here and then this is would be the bottom of the ship I guess there's a little satellite thing here and there's some weird things going around it but again just adding some shapes changing up what I was doing and I like it okay, here's another one and didn't really have a goal here this I added later. I just, I drew this whole part first. And I said, you know, that looks like a mouth biting down on something. And I had these lines coming up. And I said, well, maybe they're going up someone's nose. Maybe this is a mouth. And it's going up someone's nose. And they're, I, I don't know. That, there's no meaning behind this. It's, it's just a doodle. This isn't some intense statement or anything like that. Here's another thing you can do if you don't really know what to do. Draw things that look like they're dripping out of something else or floating out of something else um, I really like this one here's one I don't think came out that well but I still had fun doing it and I mostly did this with watercolor markers I had some fun with it again there was no point to this um, after I did it I thought maybe it looked like this was some kind of weird forest that was overgrown and there was a little clearing that you can see out of and look at the mountains that are just beyond the forest. But really, there was no meaning here. I just laid everything out and added some texture. I did a video on this one and I'll link that on top, but um, this was a fun one. I enjoyed doing this. And again, just doodle, just making shapes, different shapes, and I filled the whole page with the exact same thing. Colored it in with some watercolor. I had fun with it. Actually, I think I did the watercolor first. Yes, I think I did. And then I went ahead and uh, inked in all the the textures. And, and sometimes you start doing something and you just get stuck. This is an instance where I just got stuck. I wanted to put something, I wanted to join this somehow to the rest of this and then move it over onto the next page. And I just didn't know what to do so I just stopped and I'll come back to this and I'll fill it in later and yes I, I if you remember a previous video I said I have that need for completion and this bothers me every time I pull this book out this page bothers me but I'll finish it I'll get it done this is a good example of what I was talking about with the lines just filled in lines and shapes you see the shapes kind of came out as I was doing the lines and that's all you have to do. This one was one of my favorite ones that I've done in this book. And I just love the way that it came out. And I, I have another book somewhere that I modified this and did a, a second version of this that I even like a little bit more. But I really enjoyed this one. And this is the example that I showed you where I just colored everything around it in black. And it really makes it pop. It makes it stand out really well. Here's one I didn't finish. This is an example of something more mechanical. And I just did a little mechanical drawing. Decided as I was doing it that it looked like some kind of hoist or something like that. Um, put it on the edge of a cliff. It was pulling all this junk up out of whatever cavern this is. So I hope you got a lot out of this video. 
I really want to help you to be able to do things that maybe you're you're not sure how to do or maybe you have a little trouble doing. When I first started doing this, this was terrible for me. I struggled so hard and threw away so many things because I just started to do stuff, didn't like how it was coming out, crumpled it up, and threw it away. And I wasn't, um, I wasn't upset about it. I wasn't angry. I wasn't uh, tearing things out in a fit of rage. I just didn't like how they were showing up. So I pulled them out, crumpled them up, threw them away, and moved on. But I realized I could have just changed what I was doing. And the more different things you learn to do, the better it'll get. If you do take any of this advice and you post it on Instagram or anywhere, please tag me. I'd love to see it. If you've seen this to the end, you're awesome. Here's a couple more videos that you might be interested in, and I will see you in the next video.